It's the unhappy hour. And broadcasting to you live from the Milky Way galaxy, the solar system, planet Earth, North America, the United States of America, California, Los Angeles to be specific. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Unhappy Hour here at the TNAM Radio Network, here at the newamericanmedia.com because the old American media has failed us. My name is Brian Engelman and I am your host and I appreciate you joining us here I appreciate those of you who have been here throughout our four-year journey. Chris Engelman, my brother behind the scenes. That's him on the turntables right now. Here, let's listen to my brother, Chris. That's me playing drums. Here, let's just listen to some music, shall we? It was our group's uh, guitar player who was playing bass. Our bass player who was playing guitar. My brother on the turntables. I'm playing some drums there. Pretty fun stuff, everybody. But, it, you know, unfortunately, as I take this walk down memory lane to when we recorded this song called Calm Before the Storm by Twist of Nothing, um, you know, it kind of gets me thinking about the history of Cleveland sports and why we started this show. Well, you know what? There is nobody else in all of sports. There is no fan base. Oh, you can say the Chicago Cubs, but you know what? They had Jordan, they had the Blackhawks, they had Walter Payton. I mean, the White Sox have won it. I mean, don't get me wrong. Cubs fans are long-suffering fans, but they had something. For a while it was Boston. Oh, the Red Sox have the curse of the Bambino, and oh, you know, they've won a couple titles, and the Patriots are doing just good, just fine. Larry Bird was fine. The Bruins were good. What you have with Cleveland is you have the fact that we haven't celebrated a title since 1964. That's 15 years before I was born. I mean, it is statistically more unlikely that you can be this consistently bad than it is for you to accidentally, occasionally be good. To quote Mike Polk Jr., in his famous Factory of Sadness rant. If you haven't seen it, go go type in Factory of Sadness. He screams at Cleveland Brown Stadium. He's like, it's like they're... What does he say? Um, oh, you know, maybe I'll just pull it up here. Because I know it's kind of like toward the middle. I'm going to do that. Why not? Oh, that's why not. Because YouTube likes flagging content that you play. So i got to really be careful these days. But anyway, he says, uh, Did you happen to check out that Packers-Chargers game? It's like they're playing a different sport than you are. He's just yelling at an empty Cleveland Brown stadium. You were ruining what used to be majestic real estate on this wonderful shoreline. You're a factory of sadness. See you next week. Something like that. Um, but that reminds me of the Manny Pacquiao of, uh, <laughs> I almost said of Vander Holyfield. Uh, Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather fight. It, it was, uh, I don't know. It was uh, underwhelming, but I'll just I'll just leave it at this. It was like they were playing a different sport. You know, I've been watching some of these highlights people are sending around YouTube. Um, or I'm sorry, around Facebook, and some of them are hilarious. Oh, well, you, if you haven't seen the Mike Tyson punch out interpretation of what happened during the Pacquiao fight, you got to do it. Um, you can you can go on our our timeline and scroll backward. You'll find it on there. You might have to scroll back a couple days to write when the event was happening. Maybe the de next day. Um, but we want you to be connected with us on all levels of social media. That includes you, UFC is MMA, who has been listening to us probably for four years, just like Zach has been on our program. Um, Zach is an NBA consultant, former NBA scout, and we're going to break down what went wrong in the Cleveland Cavaliers' loss to the Chicago Bulls. Um, but those social media places, go to thenewamericanmedia.com. On the right-hand side is our TNAM radio button link. You click play, you listen live. When do we go live? Whenever we feel like it, whenever our guests can uh, work it into their schedule. So we announce that on Twitter. We're at American underscore media underscore. That's American underscore media underscore. And also underneath that is our Facebook feed. You can do it off our homepage or uh, just do a search for the new American media with spaces in between and like the page. And finally, to th if you want to throw some coins into our fountain, we have yet to set up our donate page, but we will. Because um, we really want to bring in some some staff members. This has just kind of been a, it's uh, perhaps best described as 
eighty percent of the time a one man show. Uh, we had some assistance from different people over the years in a little bit, um, but it would be great to kind of bring in some full time people. And if you want to get full time people, you know what? You got to pay their bills because then they actually have the time to spend with you. You know, you can favors and gifts only go so far, right? So if you want to throw some pennies into our wishing well, you can go on youtube.com slash the new American media. And uh, if there's an advertisement that comes up, let it play. And then maybe even click on it. We, we get pennies tossed into our coin fountain <laughs> if you let those uh, advertisements play. So uh, make sure you subscribe, youtube.com slash the new American media. So um, let's bring Zach Barris into the program. Um, man, it was uh, pretty disappointing that the Cavs came out the way they did. Well, some people say they had too much time off and missing Kevin Love. Various reasons. It didn't go well. If you're a Cavs fan. Because I guess if you're a Bulls fan, it did go well. Hey, Brian. How you doing? Oh, I'm living the dream, Zach. How are you, sir? I'm all right. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can't be ecstatic because we're down 0-1. Um, yeah. What... Were you at the game? Let's start there. I, of course, I was. Of course, you were. So, what was it like in person? What What was the energy <laughs> like? And tell us about it. Well, when you're sitting in the, uh, well, I mean, my seats are, you know, our seats are right behind the, you know, the visitors bench. So, you obviously have the Bulls, friends, family, front office down sitting right there in front of you. So, um, you know, it was a little intense. Uh, there were a fair amount of Bulls fans in the seats right there. There weren't too many in the seats. <laughs> um, but it was. It was an intense game, you know. The the crowd actually, you know, people were complaining about the crowd on Twitter. I thought it was pretty loud in there. Tell you the truth. No, I'll tell you. Watching the game, it seemed like they were sitting on their hands in the first two quarters. When they started making their no. run, when they were down by 15, you could tell they were in it. But it, it really seemed like they 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 weren't. Uh, it was no Golden State Warriors home game. That that's what it seemed like to me watching the first couple. Well, of don't quarters. forget the walls and you know if you've ever been to Oracle Arena, the walls in, in Oracle. Uh, you know, it, it's made out of concrete, and the walls, like the sounds, literally just bounce off the wall. That's how it was designed. So that's that's why no arena is going to get as loud as Oracle. Okay, fine, fair. All right, I'll I'll give you that. But I mean, when it comes on the court, you know, I was expecting to see, you know, one of those hero games out of LeBron James. But instead, you saw that perhaps too passive turnover prone. Yeah, he was prone... too passive, and I thought that was a big mistake early. And also, I, I just. From the beginning, I didn't understand why they were starting Mike Miller. I thought there was a huge question mark. You know, if it were me, I wouldn't have started him personally. I would have started James Jones, or you would have started Tristan Thompson in the player, or even Sean Marion. You know, I mean, Mike Miller, I believe, was like over a negative 20 yesterday. He was terrible in the 10 minutes he played. Some of the worst basketball, I mean, he was lagging defensively. And, and speaking of that, Tristan Thompson got clobbered by the pick and roll yesterday. What, what about Tristan Thompson? He just got steamrolled on the pick and roll. And what was the problem? Why would that? Why was that? Why did that continue to happen after having, uh, you know, quarters and all those assistant head coaches there, to, you know, to, to try a new strategy? Why did it keep going on the entire game? What, what did you say? No, I was just saying, why did it go on the entire game instead of you know making adjustments after the first quarter? They or weren't second able quarter? to adjust. It happens when you have such a limited lineup and you really only have six guys that can play. Yeah. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of positives to take out of the game. Chicago shot incredibly well which isn't a good thing, but they have their game. They have their best game we've seen from them in a long time. Cavs have their worst, and the Cavaliers barely lost that game. They really did bring it down to two points, to four points, to six points. I mean, it was it was like, it, it was like a blowout. I mean, the Cavs were Don't getting forget, smacked. Don't forget, lost every game won against the Chicago Bulls. He's faced the end. Yeah. Do you expect that the Cavs are going to come back and rip off four straight? <laughs> I'm not expecting four straight, but I expect them to win game two and I expect them to take one out of two in Chicago. You know, especially getting Jared Smith will be back. It'll be a huge bonus. I, I think I think you're going to see LeBron take a lot of shots. I think you're going to see Kyrie take a lot of shots. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm just surprised that I didn't see hero ball out of LeBron or Kyrie. It kind of seemed like if, if you needed a game to go off, this would have been it. I, I mean, I don't know. I guess I can't ask you – why do you think LeBron didn't? Because, you know, that's asking you to get inside of his head. He made a calculated and decision. And I'm not inside of his head. He, he did what he had to do, and when he tried to turn it on, it was too late. But, you know, they had a lot of opportunities. You know, they went on a lot of runs, which is a good thing. But the problem is they did not defend Gasol well in the pick and roll. Dunleavy shot the lights out. He doesn't do that very often. 
So, like I said, they, you know, if I were the Cavaliers, I'm not sitting there panicking. There's Mike, no reason to panic. Mike Dunleavy is terrible against almost every team, and then he plays the Cavaliers, and he and he looks like an all star. Like I said, it's one good game. I'm not I'm, I'm not concerning myself over it yet. Okay. I'm really not. So you expect the split? What 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 changes do you hope? Uh, David Blatt is going to I make. I expect to see a change in the starting lineup, whether it's James Jones or Sean Marion. I mean, if it were me, honestly, you know, I think the best defensive lineup would be. I mean, <laughs> I'd go with these. You don't need him to score as dull of a dole. You know, he's going to piss off whoever he's defending. You know, that's what I would do. I mean, it was. I think it, it worked in there. Dell Vadova was playing very well the other night, actually. You know, defensively, he was doing well. He was disruptive. And I'd go Kyrie, I'd go Dell Vadova, I'd go Shumpert, LeBron, and Mozgov as my starting five. I know it's a little off, but that's what I would do. Yeah, I just wonder if they could actually try to get Mozgov more involved. Do you think he's that kind the of player? Problem, the problem was he was getting beat. Yeah, but the problem was, you know, Joe Kim Noah just sits at the top of the key. It's it's frustrating to watch. But like I said, I'm, I'm the Cavaliers. I'm not really overly concerned about this. I'm really not. Derek Rose, um, you know. Derek Rose also, you know, he plays one. He has one. It seems like he has one good game out of every five. No, and I'm not even joking. Go look at go look at every game this year, and he had put up one, you know, amazing game, and it was just a bunch of four or five mediocre games in a row. So maybe he's probably due to come back to earth. He kind of let it. I want. Yeah, I wonder how that will. shoulder's doing. He got banged up there toward the end of the game. Any word on that? Uh, um, no. I mean, he left at one point. He went to the locker room during the second quarter. Well, toward the end of the game, he got he got smacked on a um, a pick. And he was holding that shoulder. He was wincing. And I'm telling you, the Cavaliers are going to be very, very physical with them the rest of the series. The thing is, you need to just get, you know, you need to play physical ball with Casal. You need to literally muscle him on there because he is a finesse guy. And when he gets overpowered, he gets crushed. But the problem is the Cavaliers kept allowing everything in the pick and roll. Tristan couldn't recover. I mean, at the point when LeBron was guarding, he couldn't do anything. And that's what it takes. And if, if that's what's going to take it, throw LeBron and Gasol. I mean, you saw LeBron and Dunleavy at points. You saw him on Gasol. That's what it's going to take. You need to put LeBron, and this is why I suggested that lineup, is you put LeBron on Gasol. And it might wear him out a little bit more, but it's going to neutralize and open up the rest of the game for everybody else pretty much, right? Yeah, and the problem is just, you know, and the lanes are controlled right now because you don't have Love and you don't have Jerry Smith. So it is, you know, it is, it's a big issue. And I think that's what they were trying to open up by getting Mike Miller starting. This is a guy who hasn't played a meaningful minute all season long. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem when you don't work people in when you have the chance to. You know? I yeah, mean, and that's the issue. So, the it cap, is what it is. But like you said, I came out of last night's loss with a positive attitude, and that doesn't usually happen. Well, the Cavaliers certainly changed uh, without Kevin Love. You know, obviously a lot oh, there's of there's no doubt. They're a better team with Kevin Love than they're without Kevin Love. You know, there's all, no all the conversation mind. is going on now, trying to figure out, you know, who's going to – Will it be Lamarcus Aldridge? Will Kevin Love stay? And all that stuff. And and, and we've talked about that at, at you know ad nauseum. Like but... I told you my thoughts on Aldridge all along. He's a Cavaliers fallback plan if they lose out on Love. And if they do, and there's a likely chance. I mean, I'm not saying likely. There's a chance that Love could want to go home to Portland. You work out a sign and trade for Lamarcus Aldridge. And I think Aldridge is a better player than Love. I've said that all along. But I think Kevin Love, don't forget he's four years younger. You want Kevin Love at this point. And don't forget the Cavaliers started to gel really nicely with Love. Yeah. Um, I think Lamarcus Aldridge though is one of the top ten players in the NBA. He's one of my favorite players. Always has been. I think it's a. I think it's a trade the Bulls regret making for Tyrus Thomas. Well, I mean, don't forget the Bulls drafted Aldridge and traded him. Yeah, how did that work out? Real well. Yeah, well, for they them. probably would have had a title or two if they had Aldridge. Well, you know, well, so, then we all said it wouldn't have Derrick Rose, so it's you know it's a toss up. All right, f- fair enough. You don't know um, what the roster would be shaped. But like if, but you know. regarding Aldridge and Love, uh, for the casual fan, they know that they lost one of the big three. Okay, that's fine. But uh, break down exactly what difference having Kevin Love on the floor makes with with the different aspects of the game, from rebounding to the spacing. Floor. He can play in the post. He can shoot the three. He's one of the few big men in the league. Really, you know, he would pull out the he pull out he pulls out a defensive player. You know, usually a four to guard the perimeter, which really helps spread the floor. It allows LeBron to drive into the lane. It allows Kyrie the ability. I mean, if you look, the Cavaliers passing the basketball are incredible when they're they're starting five. Incredible. Because you have J.R. Smith can shoot. You've got LeBron can shoot. Kyrie can shoot. And you've got Mosgov in the interior. <laughs> I mean, it's a really, it's really impressive what they were coming to do, you know, especially in the Boston series when they were coming together. I know. And like I said, I, I still think this team has a shot. I, I do, and I still think they're going to be Chicago. I'm not 
if they're down 0-2, I'll change my mind, but I'm not, you know, and I still don't necessarily will change my mind because you get JR back, but I don't think this team is going to go down 0-2. Well, a, c- a couple of shows ago, another uh, key player for the Chicago Bulls, a couple shows ago um, you had made a comment along the lines of Jimmy Butler hasn't, whatever, hasn't been playing well or something like that. And UFC is MMA chimes in. He goes, come on, man, Zach hasn't been watching. I- I'm not quoting him in front of me, but he said something like, come on, Jimmy Butler's been playing really well, and he broke down the stats. Um, that, that, I can't even, if someone even tries to argue stats, it doesn't, the only the only thing you can argue if you're going to argue points, rebounds, and assists, get out. You know that's what I tell people. Like, I'm not even going to sit here and listen to it if that's the case. Now it's different if you're going to argue if you're going to argue advanced statistics and you actually have a reasoning and you understand them. Different story, but most people do not. And if you're not involved in NBA circles, usually you're not going to involve in one. Usually you're not going to understand analytics. It just is what it is. Well, usually this dude, I mean, he he comes through with, with some st- statistics, but. You know, I, I'd have to pull up the post to know for sure. But my question, let, let's let's revamp the question then. Jimmy Butler moving forward. What kind of Jimmy Butler do you think we're going to get? And do you consider I mean, him to be one of the key I, I pieces don't, don't to know. the Arnie Bulls winning? Similar to the All Star Jimmy Butler that was close to winning Defensive Player of the Year a year ago. But it doesn't matter. The Cavaliers still have more firepower. You still have Kyrie and LeBron, and you saw what you can do. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw what we could do in spurts, but, I, you know, what I saw was kind of like th- that game was a little um, – it just reminded me the flat opening was kind of like LeBron's first game back at home with the Knicks. It was just very flat. Um, yeah. You know, and they dug themselves a hole. They just couldn't get out of. I mean, maybe the rest of the game they played better ball, but, um, you know, I, I guess – who would you call is the key for the Cavaliers moving forward then? I mean, LeBron's the best, but is it Kyrie stepping up? or It's also, it's, you know, because Kyrie, you know, is in the stuff. It's getting Shumpert involved, I think, big time. He had a good game. He, he did have a good game. And the thing is, you need Shumpert to be able to make shots. You really do. And I think it's getting your role players, getting Marion in there, getting a guy like Della Vidola to play some. You know, you, you're going to need him to play better than he's ever played before. He played well the other night. You're going to need that out of him. You need him to sit in there and piss someone off on the other team because that's what he does best. He's a, he's a kid like Aaron Kraft, yeah. you know, at Ohio State, who just sits there and pisses off, the, you know, the offensive player. He's defending, they're slapping him, clearly almost fouling him on every play. You know? <laughs> he's, he's a like scrappy little kid. Playing. He's a scrappy little kid living his dream, playing with the best player on the planet and an up and coming absolute superstar in Kyrie. I mean, he's fighting for that last spot. Like he, he doesn't. He, he wants to keep getting minutes. You know, he, he does have a lot of energy. I mean, I saw him clank plenty of shots off the, the back, the back of the rim. Um, but you know, like you said, if if you can make your huge impact on defense, being really irritating and and just messing with the flow and the timing and the shot clock, um, they all play a key role. Just like Tristan's offensive rebounds and you know everything is important. Um, I guess. And do you have any revised predictions based on Game One? How do you How do you think? I'm still taking the Cavs. It just is what it is. I'm not going to sit there and change my mind until I see this team. If they're down 0-3, I'll sit there and change my mind. But they're not right now. They're down 0-1, and nothing changes. You know, don't forget, everybody blew it out of proportion a couple of years ago. I was at the game in Miami when Nate Robinson took over and beat the Heat in Game One. I was there. You know, people are blowing it out of proportion, going, oh, the heater, you know, the heater, you know, the Bulls are going to take the heat to seven. We all knew that the Bulls, that was their one game to win in that series. We all knew it. It was the fans blew everything out of proportion, like, oh, they're going to, you know, and like game two, the heat, LeBron put them in their place. Game three, put them in their place. Game four, and game five. <laughs> I mean, it's LeBron. LeBron doesn't sit there and lose in the second round of the playoffs. When was the last time we saw that? When did when did uh, 2010 2010 uh, was the last time he hasn't made a championship? I'm just throwing it out there. And this guy doesn't lose. Yeah, well, we, that easily. We it, it was not the it, the opening game I was hoping for. I mean, we all know that. Um, right, but it, like I said, you have to be encouraged by it. Look what the Bulls did. The Bulls shot almost 65 percent from three point land. And still barely won the game. Is it a little bit like Manny Pacquiao, the Bulls? Like, they gave it all they had in the first round, and then as this thing drags out, we're going to wear them down? Don't forget, the Bulls don't play like this every day. We saw one time against Milwaukee. One time. They don't play like this every day. This isn't the Michael Jordan Bulls. This isn't... If there was a Michael Jordan Bulls, I would say, done. Cooked, toasted. You know, you're done. This isn't the Michael Jordan Bulls. This is... 
That was a really strong closeout game, though. I mean, 60 points. That's It was. It was, but Milwaukee had reached the end of the run. Don't forget, Milwaukee is a bunch of guys in their early 20s. Yeah, they're, they're playing over you know, their heads. Although, happened. they could have they're taken that double over overtime game, though, too. That could have they're been playing a... with a second-year point guard. Giannis and the Tumpo's in the second year. I mean, these guys at Milwaukee's a young, young team. You, do you think they're yeah, for they real, especially getting before. getting Parker back? Do you think they're for real going to be a, a team to contend with for a long time in the East? Um, I think, the, oh, yeah, of course. I think Jason Kidd's done a fantastic job this year. Having Carter Williams, you know, having Jabari Parker, having Giannis Eddington Tupo, um, you know, when you've, got a good, when you've got a good core like that, a young nucleus, they're going to be a very, very good basketball team in years to come. They're going to be one of the elite teams in the East probably. What did you What did you make of uh, the other game uh, with the Hawks and Wizards? Uh, you know what? I didn't even have a chance to watch that the other night. Yeah, yeah I mean, is it the most compelling television around? No, no honestly, I don't care to watch the Hawks. I mean, as much as I wanted to, I was busy the other day, had a lot of stuff to do, and I didn't have a chance to turn it on. Um, but I will tell you this: I did watch the Clippers Spurs game seven. Unbelievable! Um, it was. I mean, it was a fantastic game, and the Clippers last night. Holy wow! <laughs> Without Chris Paul, I mean, it, it, they're resilient. I mean, Doc Rivers is an excellent coach. You know, but we all, I always view the Clippers as a team, okay, they're never going to get out of the first round, you know. It is what it is. You know, they're not going to beat the Spurs. I hope they do, but they're not going to. And then they do, and then they knock off the Rockets last night in game one pretty easily. Has that without, team without finally figured it out? Point I mean, this is a team, if they get past this round, I mean, like I said, I'd still love to see my dream finals of Cavs Clippers. Hey, uh, well, I, I've been ta- I've been spending some time with some people from San Francisco, and it's like, man, Warriors, Cavs would be fantastic. But yeah, right in my backyard, if it was Clippers, Cavs, oh Great. man, San Francisco, I would really Oracle, like that. Oracle is in the worst area of town. It's right in the middle of Oakland. Oh. I went to a Raider game once. I'm just gonna leave it there for now. I've made my thoughts clear on. Whew. Yeah, I don't. I don't ever intend to do that again. We'll just. We'll just. Uh... Jokeland. Yes, sir. Uh, that's a terrible city. I like San Francisco. Don't get me wrong. San Francisco is a great city. When that arena, if it ever gets built, in San Francisco will be fantastic. Hey, San Francisco is a really neat place. I, you know, I've been there quite a few times over the past few years, and uh, yeah, it's a city that's. It, it, it's a great city. Yeah, there's something about it. There's there's like a personality to it. There's a feel. It's it's just a different place, and it's it's pretty cool. But um. Uh, do you see the Warriors being able to cruise to this thing, or do you think there's any fight left in the Grizz? I don't think they're going to cruise. I mean, I think right now, I, I mean, I think you got New Orleans, who is the worst team in the West, but still at Anthony Davis, and they're no cakewalk. Don't get me wrong. They're no cakewalk. Um, you know, looking at the other teams, though, in there, I mean, Golden State will get to the conference finals, there's no doubt. But it depends who they're playing. You know, don't forget Memphis is playing without Mike Connolly, without Mike Conley right now. That changes you know, he's, it. He's the backbone of that team. He's he's, he's the floor general for that team. It's not going to be easy, you know, to even beat him with your full strength. Let alone without, you know, arguably your best or second best player behind Marcus Saul. And that's what people said about the Cavs. Like they said, ah, oh, well, we didn't have you winning the the title anyway, but now that you lost Love, you have no chance. I've heard that a lot. But I mean, Mem- Memphis is one of those teams they struggle offensively to begin with. They don't, you know, they don't have a LeBron. They don't have a Kyrie. You know, they rely on their offense from the big two and, you know, Randolph and Gasol and, and then and Mike Conley, you know, to assist the ball, you know, and, and drive. And that's what, I mean, Mike, Con- Mike Conley is not necessarily a scorer. He only puts up about 11 or 12 a game, but he's such a good passer. You know, he really runs the floor long, gets everybody involved. And, you know, you're not seeing that right now. So it's going to be tough for Golden State. I mean, it's going to be tough for Memphis to beat Golden State. Well, we're going to get a chance to watch it. Um, I guess, you know, we'll see how these, these next few games play out, and we'll bring you back to do a recap of that as well. Um, you have any thoughts on any of the other stuff, the Pacquiao fight? Did you watch it? I did. I ordered it. All Probably right. Yeah, I wait. mean, like I said, I wanted Pacquiao to win. I knew Mayweather was going to win. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah. What, what did you make of uh, now he's saying that he, he had a shoulder injury beforehand and he might get sued and there's a, there, a whole can of worms just opened with that because so many people I'm not put money surprised. Out. I mean, yeah, there's a class action lawsuit now. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's just tough. Yeah, I, that's that's not good. Uh, I don't know. Do you, do you think I, I'm I'm kind of new to the whole concept of uh, hiding an injury in boxing and then 
uh, irate fans who either bought the fight or bet on the fight, wanting some sort of repercu- you know, uh, retribution because of it or reimbursement. Do you have any idea if they have any legitimate chance at getting something here? Did he screw up that bad? I don't know. I, I don't really know. I mean, we're finding out more details day, you know, day in, day out. I really don't know what's going to happen. Don't forget, the fight was only three days ago. <laughs> it seems like a month ago. It seems like I, I wouldn't mind... I had 24 mind... people over my apartment for the fight. Was, was Johnny Manziel one of them? No, he was not. Ah, oh, darn. He moved out. Yeah, I saw... Uh, like I... I, s- I told you last week that was going to happen. <laughs> no, I read on ESPN today's... Yes, he told me last week, everybody. Um. <laughs> I did tell you that. I told you last week, right after I saw him on Friday last week, and I got the lowdown of him. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, that was the least surprising headline that I read today on ESPN. Um, you have any thoughts on the draft? I do. I was happy with the draft. I mean, I was kind of pissed in the third round. I do like to do Johnson picks. Don't get me wrong. I really wanted Jalen Strong from Arizona State. I do like him. I thought it would have been a good pick. The Browns neglected wide receiver again. But like I said, they're going to win ball games in the trenches. And don't forget, this is the 6-3 and three football team last year when they had a healthy Alex Mack. Don't forget, you get a healthy Alex Mack. You're adding Cameron Irving. You're adding depth on the O-line. You're moving Greco to the bench now. Don't forget, Irving can play. Don't forget, you've got a guy in Joel Batonio that can play guard or tackle. Okay, so if you got an injury there. Cameron Irving played guard, center, or tackle. It's huge. It gives you so much versatility on the old line. That means Greco can slide in back at guard no matter what happens. If there, you know, God forbid there is an injury. Danny Shelton shores up our run defense, which is absolutely horrendous last year. So I think he really plugged some big holes. Um, you know, they added pass rushing in the second round. You added Duke Johnson, who's an explosive running back. Yeah, I helped. liked I liked watching his highlights, man. He's a he's a guy that can catch a ball and make one move, and you, you have a seventy yard touchdown. Exactly. He, he's very good. And, you know, I like what they did. I mean, I, I think they got some versatility. I think they added a few pieces, I think, through this draft. Yeah, they obviously, they're not a perfect football team. They still don't have a quarterback. They still don't have a tight end. They still don't have some wide receivers. But, you know, let's see where they go this year. I'm not, I'm not going to count them out because don't forget, like I said, they were 6-3 and three when they had a good line last year. And they played with a power running game. The quarterback, all they had to do was get the job done. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it. it's going to be Johnny Manziel's job this year. They got to see after it's he bottomed Johnny out. It's not Johnny Manziel's job. It's Josh McCown's job. Yeah, Johnny Manziel would would have to earn it, and that's pretty much what we're talking about. Is there would have to be an injury, or he would have to earn it. And you know, I'm at, I'm at least happy that he's taken the the few steps that we we're aware of right now. And uh, you know, at least Joe Hayden and Joe Thomas are giving him that preliminary vote of confidence, saying they see a totally different guy. And maybe that's what it takes when you go in and out of rehab and you reevaluate your life and your choices and your uh, the repercussions of your decisions. You know, who knows? But uh, with a first-round pick, I think you you might as well give him a second year while you build all the I other heard. pieces around him. So, um, all right. Well, you know, there's plenty of basketball to be played. We don't need to break this down any further. I guess on our way out the door, you maybe we'll talk. Yeah, I moved all day today, so it's been a long day. I moved the same building, just new apartment. Oh, up or down? I don't know. What, what, what up, did you? Up, up, up. Any any particular reason? Um, just bigger spot. There you go. All right. Yeah, it's it's a neat. The other one wasn't already big enough. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still have what do they call that stuff? Zebra wood? Is that what you had? Oh yeah, now two different colors. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the stuff's kind of neat. It's kind of flashy. The new has got a wet bar and a dry bar, so two bars in the actual apartment itself in the unit. So you see why it might have been awesome that Johnny Manziel moved out. Yeah, these places oh, yeah. are bachelor pads with a with a off the charts nightclub in the basement. It's uh, yeah, probably the best thing he could do was get the hell out oh, of and Party Brian, Central. and the rooftop just opened up last weekend. So oh lord, really? <laughs> yeah, with a full service restaurant and bar. So <clears throat> I ran to Francona there the other night. Oh man, I, what do you think Francona of the tribe? In the building too. What did you tell him? Did you yeah, ask him what's been, up with your squad? Been, no, I, I didn't. I was actually I had a little too much to drink, so I just got a picture with him. Shocking. Um, um, but, no, getting back to it, though, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I don't know about the tribe right now. They have some questions about their lineup that they started to hit over the last week, so let's take it from there. Yeah, it's a long season. I mean, un- until we can kind of uh, crown the Cavaliers champion this year, uh, you know, baseball is just – it's going to be there, but, you know, as the weather continues getting consistently warmer, uh, I, th- I think all of us are going to kind of start turning our eyes and attention to both uh, training camp for the Cleveland Browns, seeing if Johnny Manziel can come on really strong, 
and impress some people, and then, of course, swing over to the Indy and see if they're around 500 at the All-Star break or so, and uh, that's usually when they make their move. I wish they could just start strong instead of always digging a hole like that, but hey, what are you going to do? Uh, Terry Francona, he's got some, some players with talent. Maybe they can put start pulling it together now. So, yeah. Um, all right, dude, we'll get, get some rest. I appreciate you jumping Thank on you, again. And, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll go game by game if we can do a, do a quick segment. Maybe we we'll, can do a show on Thursday. Let's see how game two goes. Yeah, and we'll, we'll see how our schedules fall. work out. We'll see how game two goes. And, um, you know, I, I hope that this is going to be a um, one of those – epic seasons and especially as a Cleveland sports fan it's something that we're never going to forget whenever we get that first title and if it's this year I don't really want to take days off if, if I can avoid it because I want to document it and just remember what the ride that we went through because the Ohio State Buckeyes this past season man they uh they they really gave us a season of uh to remember to remember it's something that they will make a movie like remember the titans out of mark my words there will be an epic movie about their season uh down to their third string quarterback and cardale jones who played a great may day joke did you see that his april fool's joke his may fool's I joke he's, he's gonna be an akron zip yeah cardale jones tweeted out hey i've loved my time with the buckeyes but sadly this chapter has to come to an end i'm moving on i'm gonna be an akron zip <laughs> And he changed his background. Cool. Every, and he, right, and he well, said, thanks again. Thanks again for having me on, Brian. Absolutely, man. Take care, Zach. Uh, yeah, it was it was really funny. He, it was May Fools, and it's like, dude, Cardale, there's no May Fools. He's like, I just invented one. He also whooped on a kid in a game of what was it? In a game of Madden by like 60 points in the hospital, and the kids challenged him to a rematch. Now he wants to play him in something that he's good at, like uh, what do you say, hockey? Uh, I mean, the, the kid's just funny. He's 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 definitely a little wacky, a little uh, a little reckless, but it mostly seems good-natured reckless, um, as opposed to what I thought I was seeing out of Jameis Winston, um, which in today's day and age, knowing what your life can be if you kind of play your cards right, you really question the decision-making process behind that. A lot like Josh Gordon and Johnny Manziel and. You know, we've seen it all too many times, but really, think back to yourself at 20 years old, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. When did you start acting mature? I like to think I still haven't. I don't know. That's up for you to decide, but you can leave your comments on youtube.com slash the new American media. Click subscribe while you're there. On Twitter, we're at American underscore media underscore. On Facebook, do a search for The New American Media with spaces in between and like the page. And check out our homepage, thenewamericanmedia.com. So, for everybody here at the TNAM Radio Network, I appreciate you. And I love you. Thank you so much for the past four years. Hopefully the next six to culminate in our ten-year plan to become the world's largest media company. Hey, you know what? Thanks for joining us on this journey. And peace. You're listening to Agree to Disagree with Brian Engelman, and this is John B. Wells reminding you that not only is Brian Engelman a cool guy, and not only is the NewAmericanMedia.com a very cool platform, but here's a cool idea for you, too. Are you alone? Not really. Do you like dogs? Do you like cats? You do. Of course you do. Everybody does. One or the other, maybe even both. You know, there are a lot of dogs and cats that are at shelters right now, and if somebody doesn't take them home, they're going to wind up euthanized. That's a nice way of saying they're going to be killed because there's simply not enough room. I guarantee it, the best dogs and the best cats, the best pets, come from shelters. There's something about dogs and cats they know. They know where they are. You walk through one of them, and certainly at least one is going to look at you and go, I wish you'd take me home. I'm in hell. Please take me out of here. It'll be the best thing that you ever did for your soul. You'll feel good about it. And not only that... But you have a friend for life. doesn't matter if you got money, you don't have money. What well, doesn't make any difference to a dog or a cat. All they need is the sound of your voice and maybe even the stroke of your hand, and they're fine. Maybe a little food every once in a while. The sweetest sound that those pets ever hear is your voice. Think it over and adopt a cat or a dog from a local shelter today. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did.